Hello, my name's Robert Dean Steele, and this is your commentary on the Bible, or your daily Bible class. Well, let's open our time with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today for the wonderful Word of God, and we thank you, Lord, today for the, the expression of what we can learn today from Jesus' life, from Luke chapter 17. And we ask your blessing upon it now, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, Jesus begins to deal with how to deal with offenses. Then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no one should come, but woe to him through who they do come. He says offenses do come, but don't be the individual that brings it. It would be better for him to have a millstone hung around his head then thrown into the sea, then to hurt one of these little ones. So he's talking about, you know, basically, if you hurt a little one, someone who walks in childlike faith, or even just a child, he says, there is a very deep consequence to it. Take heed yourselves, if your brother sins against him, against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times a day returns and says, I repent, you must forgive him. So basically what Jesus is saying is, listen, when you are being, uh, when you've been hurt or offended, he says, talk to them about the situation. Don't leave it and don't let it fester. That's basically what he's saying is walk in instant forgiveness. And if a person forgives, asks for forgiveness, you need to forgive them. And the apostle said, increase our faith. Well, this is the next thing they said. Okay, Lord, increase our faith. So he says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to a mulberry tree, pull up and by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has in the field, come and sit and eat? Will he not rather say, prepare something for my supper and gird yourselves and serve me, and I've eaten you drink, and afterwards you will be drinking? So Jesus is basically saying, listen, you said increase your faith. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you are in the first thing walking by faith and believe. Secondly, he says, be a person who walks with obedience. And then he says, does he thank the servant because he did these things which he commanded? Likewise, if you've done these things, he says, you are a profitable servant. If you don't, you are an unprofitable servant for what you've done. So Jesus is teaching some very important lessons about faith. He says, first of all, when your master, who is the Lord, asks you to do something, make sure that you do it. Otherwise, you are going to be an unprofitable profitable service. And also as well, when you walk, you walk by faith and you believe God. Then he goes on to say this in verse number 11. Now it came to pass that he went to Jerusalem and as he was passing through Samaria and Galilee, so Jesus leaves uh, Jerusalem, heads back up into Samaria and Galilee, he entered a certain village and met 10 men who were lepers and they were far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And and he saw them and he said to them, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. So what Jesus did that day is he sent the word and he healed. Now that's a very important fact that God will sometimes use the laying on of hands and also the anointing of oil. But sometimes all we have to do is send the word and they are healed. Well, now, um, as they went, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw was healed, he returned and glorified God with a voice. And he, he fell down his feet and gave thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus says, there were ten that were cleansed. Were there not ten? But where are the other nine? Were they not any found to return to give glory except the foreigner? Jesus basically says, if you are going to have this happen, he said to him, arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Now, we don't know if the other ten were, or the other nine did not receive their healing. All we know is that those who came back 
gave glory to God. So when you're touched by God, what he's saying is basically this, is make sure that you give thanks and glory to God. Well, that's where we're going to stop. Actually, let's go a little bit further here, okay? Jesus is going to be ten, begin to teach on the second coming here. So let's spend some time with that. He said to the Pharisees, now that he asked the Pharisees, when the kingdom of heaven would come, he says, the kingdom of heaven will not come with observation. Or he, he says, it will come with observation. He says, see here, the kingdom of God is within you. So Jesus tells them, there's going to be some signs that God is coming. First of all, the kingdom of God is going to come inside of you with righteousness, peace, and joy. And he said to his disciples, the days will come when you desire to see the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. He says, you'll desire, but you will not see it. And they said, look here, look at, and he says, There'll be people who'll come along and say, follow me. And he says, don't go after them. He says, as the lightning flashes from the, from the east to the west, so shall the Son of Man come. He says, it will be so quick, you won't even have time to think a thought or even utter a word. He says, but many are going to suffer in this generation. And he says, it will be like in the days of Noah, where they ate and were given in marriage, and then Noah entered the ark and they were all destroyed. He says, basically, people will not even know it is happening. And it'll be like Lot and the Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but the fire and brimstone came down, and even the people were warned, they still didn't. And he says, in that day, who is ever on the housetops and his goods are in the house, he says, don't even go back into that. And he says, remember Lot's wife. He says, remember how she turned around. He says, yeah, he says, whoever seeks his life will lose it. And whoever loses life will preserve it. He says, you need to be watching. He says, because you don't know the day nor the hour. And so you need to be aware. He says, there'll be one man in a bed and one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. Two men will be feel, will be in the field and one will be taken left. This is actually a description of the, uh, the rapture and how quickly it will be. It will be like lightning and it'll be so quick that one will be there, one will be taken. And they answered, Lord, when is this going to happen? He says, wherever the body is, the eagles will gather together. He says, you need to be watching. That's what you need. He says, there's all kinds of signs out there. But he says, you need to be watching. And that's the one thing we have to remember when it comes to the coming of the Lord. You need to be watching. You need to be alert. And you need to watch the signs because you don't know what's going to happen. Paul says it's going to be in the twinkling of an eye. That means a millionth of a second. So live ready every moment of the day. A little thought for you from Luke chapter 17. And this is your commentary on the Bible or your daily Bible class. My name is Robert Dean Steele. You have yourself a great and godly day.